Avoid these six pitfalls when thinking about railroad retirement. Welcome everyone to another edition of the Highball Advisors Railroad Retirement Whiteboard. My name is John McNamara of Highball Advisors and today we're going to talk about uh, you know claiming railroad retirement, different strategies, things we want to avoid, mistakes that uh, I've seen railroaders make, um, maybe some prejudices around their decision making. So maybe I can uh, shatter a few of the myths, some of the urban legends I guess. Uh, around railroad retirement. So let me walk through these six that I've come up with uh, for railroaders, all right? Here's some of the things that maybe change the way you want to think about railroad retirement a little bit. So first uh, is worrying about dying, right? You say, well, I'm not going to live past railroad retirement, you know, long into railroad retirement. So uh, I want to get my money back. Uh, I've paid into it all this year, right? You know, check out my video, Breaking Bad and Railroad Retirement. It goes over break-even points in railroad retirement. So I get that, right? You've paid in a lot of money. You want your money back. I get that. But the way you want to look at railroad retirement is it's, it's longevity insurance, right? You know, you can live a long time. Sorry. You know, I'm sorry if that upsets you, but there's a chance you can live a long time. I mean, medical technology is getting a lot better, so you want to make sure your money's there. So uh, by claiming early, you might not, that money might not be enough as you get later in your later years. So think about that, right? Think of it as a longevity insurance and not so much getting your money back. So that's point number one. Uh, here's the second one, which is kind of funny against the first one, is waiting too, too long to claim. You go, John, you just told me to wait. No, I didn't say to wait. But anyway, waiting too long to claim, right? So there's certain times when you should be claiming early, right? Maybe you have a disabled child. Uh, they can claim earlier, right? You have a minor child. Uh, they can, uh, once you start uh, retirement, they can get, they can get the, the benefits. So that's something to think about. Or maybe you're single in poor health, right? So if you're single in poor health, well then, okay, you know you're in poor health. Uh, you know, the doctor's told you you're in poor health. Then, okay, I get that. Get the money earlier, right? You might not make it to break even. Now, I put this stop here because and now, if you're married in poor health, well, there's another part of the equation. It's the spouse. So if you have a healthy spouse, right, it kind of reverts back up to the longevity thing, right? How is your spouse going to be taken care of? So understand what that would look like, right, and then set your benefits to that rate. So you might have to stay longer in order to have uh, the protection uh, later on in life. So that's important when you think about that. Let's move over to number three is... Uh, the earning limits, not working, right? Some people say, I don't want to work because then I got to give up, you know, I'm one year away from full retirement age. I got to give $1 out of every $2 in benefits. But the important thing to remember is at full retirement age, that goes away, okay? So those adjustments are gone. So um, normally people who are, uh, you know, working still and, and collecting, I would, I would keep working. I wouldn't let that distract you. So that's, that's one of the things there. Don't worry about the loss of benefits for, or the, the reduction, I should say, in benefits because it's going to adjust upward at full retirement age. So that's a good one. Uh, number four, not filing for a widow or widower benefits, right? So they can file at 60 uh, as a widow or widower to, um, to get the benefits, right? And then there's a strategy there, right? So... Um, Let's say if you're the railroader and are a widow or a widower, right, you can collect the, um, uh, the widow benefits, the survivor annuity on Social Security, and then switch later to railroad retirement at full retirement age. So there's things to think about. Remember, there's all these combinations of, uh, of uh, railroad retirement interchanging with Social Security. It must be over a thousand different combinations. So that's like one strategy right there. So if you're a widow, you know, uh, you, can, you can collect that. I mean, I have a client that does that right now. It's, it, you know, uh, collecting the survivor benefits, going to wait for full retirement age, and then switch, turn on the railroad retirement. All right, so that's a strategy to think about. In this case, it, it seemed it's working out very well uh, for uh, my client there. So that's one of the things about uh, getting divorced, right? There's another uh, thing to remember. Um, Thinking about remarriage, you're going to lose your spousal uh, benefits. So think about that on the remarriage um, 
depending upon what your uh, spousal benefits are now versus what they would be with the new spouse. So that's something to think about uh, in there. And remember, it's the 10 years. Uh, you have to be married and, uh, and obviously deceased to collect the uh, survivor benefits. But you have to have uh, 10 years of marriage there to get the, uh, uh, to be eligible for the uh, survivor benefits there. Uh, Okay, and number six is uh, this one I put in here, uh, number railroad, finishing the race. And what do I mean by that is, uh, you know, railroad retirement is very powerful and it's a great way to retire. Is I've seen railroaders leave at, you know, 25 years or I've seen some even leave at 29 years where they're still a year away and uh, you're just leaving so much money on it. And basically, it's, you know, if, it's, if you're below 60, it's seven years of, fr of free full retirement age benefits versus that discounted rate that doesn't even start till 62. Uh, so, you know, it's like, oh, here's 62 with a 30% discount or full retirement benefits. So, um, you know, everybody's situation is different, but just, I just want to drive home that point is just if you're there a year, two, three, and it's not, you know, finishing that race, I guess. I'll just leave it at that. But it's a, big, it's a big number to be leaving on the table. So I just wanted to uh, put that in there as the last one at number six. So I hope you found this video helpful, some food for thought there. Uh, feel free to sign up for my Boarding for Rare Retirement process if you're close to retirement. Uh, these are the claiming strategies that you got to start be thinking about, right? Big part of retirement. So uh, it's good to have somebody help guide you along on those uh, decisions that you make. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's go growing great. Very excited. I think we're close to almost over 1,500 subscribers. Fantastic. Uh, click on the notification bell to get the latest videos that are coming out. So that's great. Come out every weekly. So uh, everyone, till next time, please stay safe, stay on track, and take care. So long, everybody.